Football practice is in full sway in Foley this week, and prospects for a bright season look good. The Onlooker, September 11, 1930. 1930 would usher in one of the greatest seasons in school history. The season opened with a close win over Robertsdale, and from there the home team simply dominated the competition. On a muddy field and in a downpour of rain Friday, the Foley Lions trampled the Gonzales Florida Agricultural School boys throughout the entire afternoon to a score of 66 to nothing, with the last half of the game being cut by four minutes. The Onlooker, September 26, 1930. Coach Adams used the open date in week three to work on fundamentals. The week ended with an intra-squad practice game one side calling themselves the Orange Eaters, while the other side were the Potato Diggers. The scrimmage ended in a 6-6 tie after playing 10 straight quarters with no rest in between. The Milton, Florida football team is on the dinner menu for the Foley Lions here Friday afternoon, and Coach Adams' boys are confident they will enjoy a big feast. The Onlooker, October 10, 1930. And feast they did, with the Lions romping over the visitors by a whopping score of 80 to nothing. The team went on to beat a strong Flomaton team 45 zip, and Robertsdale 56 to nothing before suffering their only blemish of the season, a scoreless tie with Frisco City. The only team to score on Foley that year was Atmore. On a play in which the Lion defenders actually stopped playing due to an inadvertent whistle, Sixty years later, Coach Adams still remembered that play. It was Atmore. Uh, the head lineman was Martin Crosby, who owned the drugstore at Foley. And I was supposed to give him a horn for the... My players were accustomed to a horn for the head linesman. But I, my one single horn didn't work, so I gave him a whistle, like the... the uh, mm -hmm. So we were offside attacking Atmore mm -hmm. and the whistle blew and our boys stopped. But they, the Atmore fellows knew that the referee was behind them and the ball was not dead until the referee blows his whistle. So they just let him run on through them and go on for a touchdown. He wasn't from Atmore, was he? Oh, gross, gross, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Uh, that was just one of those things that made us so mad. We were determined that uh, there was going to be no one to cross our goal line. The Lions went on to win that game 19-7. to After a game at Citronelle was canceled due to inclement weather, the Lions would set a single game scoring record that still stands in the record books. Friday, the Foley Lions made a walk away with the McGill Blues of Mobile in a, the most one-sided football game of the season. With all of Foley's meager list of substitutes seeing plenty of service, the score was 97 to nothing. In the backfield, Joe Gallagher, Dan Campbell, Joe Dumas, Melvin and Marvin Roberts carried the pigskin through, around, and over the Mobilians behind perfect interference. The Onlooker, November 25th, 1930. The Lions closed out the season with a 35-0 victory over Excel to complete an undefeated 8-0-1 campaign. The team scored a record 411 points in those eight games, yielding only a single touchdown the entire season. 
Coach Adams left after the close of the school year to enter graduate school at Columbia University. He was a captain in the United States Navy during World War II, and after the war, he served as director of student activities at the University of Miami for 21 years before retiring in 1968. Lester Fraley became the new head coach in 1931. This was the first year that players had numbers on their uniforms and also marked the first ever game against Fairhope. The Foley Lions defeated Fairhope 14 to nothing, but it was in a game that they will always remember. Fairhope is playing football for the first time this season, and they show the making of a good team. The Lions made two touchdowns and the two extra points on the try for the goal. Foley made 15 first downs and Fairhope 6. The Onlooker, November 26, 1931. The team finished the year with a 6-3-1 record with the defense recording seven shutouts that season. In the midst of the Depression, and due to depleted funds, school didn't open until October 3rd and only stayed open through Thanksgiving. There were just five games on the schedule during this short school term, but the Lions once again finished the season with a winning 3-2 and two record. Prior to the start of the 1933 season, Coach Fraley was named principal of Foley High School, and Foley's new coach was Malcolm Aiken. Coach Aiken had been an all-SEC selection and captain on the 1932 University of Tennessee football team. One of the most outstanding games that year came against Fairhope. Before a representative crowd, Foley completely humbled Fairhope High School, and when the dust had cleared away and the final whistle was blown, the score was 67 to nothing. Claude Pop Underwood was the scoring hero of the game, accounting for five of Foley's touchdowns. The Onlooker, November 9, 1933. The Lions closed out the season with a 45-13 win over Robertsdale and finished the year with a 7-2-1 record in Coach Aiken's only season at Foley High School. Nineteen thirty-four saw Carson E. Green take over the reins as Foley's new coach. He led the Lions to the county championship with a 4-1-2 record. Among the team's notable victories was a 67-6 win over Monroeville in a game in which Sidney Howell set a mark which is still unsurpassed in school history by scoring six touchdowns in a single outing. The Foley Lions trounced the Robertsdale Bears 12 to nothing in the final game of the season at Robertsdale today. The heavy Robertsdale line crumbled under the hard charging lines and at no time did Robertsdale threaten the Lions goal line. Ill feeling evidence throughout culminated in a free-for-all at the close of the game. The Mobile Press, November 24th, 1934. The 1935 season dawned with Clay Knight at the helm for the Lions. The team finished with a 5-3 record on the season. One of the highlights of the year was the 8-7 victory over Citronelle. Fans saw a scrappy 11 meet the wits of a more experienced and heavier Citronelle team in a game that was thrilling.
Lions got off to a slow start in 1937 under new head coach John T. Middlebrook, but Foley rallied to win the final four games of the season. Lions defeated all their county opponents that season, including the dreaded Baymanette Tigers. The Foley Lions defeated the Baymanette Tigers November 11th by a score of 6 to nothing in a game that was played in a downpour of rain. The Lion team played as a unit, as football should be played, and the 11 men that started the fierce attack against Baymanette were the same 11 men that were in the game when the final whistle blew. The Onlooker, November 18th, 1937. The 1938 Foley Lions have nine lettermen returning to their squad, and opposing teams will have plenty of trouble trying to stop Cecil Blackwell, as he carries 155 pounds of power and speed at fullback. The Onlooker, September 15, 1938. The 1939 team also finished 7-2 and, and again won the county championship. The Lions defeated St. Stanislaus and future Heisman Trophy winner Doc Blanchard by a score of 14 to nothing, ending that school's 28-game winning streak. The Atmore game was another big victory as the Lions shut out the Blue Devils 6 to nothing. The shutout prevented the fans from seeing a celebrity on the Atmore team. Life magazine ran a story that year on Atmore's kicker, Luverne Wise, a 16-year-old female who dazzled opposing linemen with her uniform. Thank <laughs> you. 